speaking of the night off, John Johnson, okay. how exactly do you give Dan the Dragon Wilson the night off since he doesn't really work for you? That Tell me in on the intricacies of this. It's Friday night. It's yep. the Friday night portion of Hardcore I, I got that. I'm the owner. Yeah, therefore, right. I can make decisions. Uh -huh. It's well within my power. And I figured Dan would enjoy the night off. Uh, well, we'll have to see. Oh, good. The Zero X just leveling Skeeter Frost. But Skeeter apparently still has a lot of werewolf that I'll be able to kick on out. Actually, a very, very impressive showing from Zero here this evening. It, it, absolutely. And like I said, this is why I'm proud of my Friday night guys. I mean, they're in there against Skeeter Frost, you know, an established talent here in Wildside. Mm -hmm. And Zero is show Oh, right there. Ugh. Boy, Skeeter thinking on his feet. And Sal over there trying to revive Zero X. Both men are down, and Mike Posey has started his 10 count. One of these men, I prefer to be Zero X, if you want to know the truth. I'm a little biased here. Well, he needs to right. get to his feet. Well, I'll give you that, John Johnson. You certainly involved, should be proud of the Friday Night franchise. You certainly have turned it into a considerable portion, a very noticeable portion of the NWA overall franchise. But Skeeter Frost coming to life. Oh, it's sending Zero X high into the air. Big, big backdrop. Right there, sets him up. Oh, right there, Samoan drop. And a nice give up on Skeeter. Oh, and a standing moonsault right oh. there. Oh, yeah, and Skeeter Frost, Samoan heritage is well known. And Sal Renaro dragging Skeeter up by his legs. And referee Mike Posey on, otherwise diverted. Skeeter putting the brakes on. And Skeeter Frost is tying up Sal Renaro like a pretzel. But he's taking his attention away from Zero X. And Zero X with the ax handle right off the apron. And there, you know what? I'm going to say it. Skeeter Frost just got what he deserved. He took his attention away from the match, away from his opponent, and that's not how you win the match. You are correct, sir. But the adding the uh, initial part of the equation that Salvatore Renaro is at, at the moment not an official portion of this matchup. Therefore, he should not have been involved with Skeeter Frost. Skeeter had just dropped 0 7 on 0 6, 0 X on his head. Can we get the gentleman's name correctly? Because he's got me so addled with Salvatore Renaro at ringside. And Skeeter, oh, perfect moonsault. Picture perfect and textbook, and he had just defeated Zero X. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Skeeter Frost. Impressive goings on the part of Mr. Frost with, a, with an opponent he didn't anticipate in wrestling here this evening. And with the opponent that he was planning on facing, still being involved very liberally in a ringside. So I tell you. I'm glad that Skeeter Frost is going to uh, to quote um, a gentleman who will be joining us in the second half of Hardcore Hell, Dusty Rhodes. Skeeter Frost is going to the pay window here at Hardcore Welcome back to the Hardcore Hell recap edition of NWA Wildside, one of the great championship matches we had at Hardcore Hell 2004 involved the NWA World Junior Heavyweight Championship held by one Terrell Clark, Mr. 630. And he's not referring to the time of day, I don't mind telling you. Terrell Clark putting that title on the line against the Wild Side Junior Heavyweight Champion, one Fast Eddie, but managed by Salvatore Renaro. As we've noticed over the past couple of months here at Wild Side, Salvatore Renaro has been somewhat of a good luck charm, of all things, to Fast Eddie. However, at Hardcore Hell, Sal Renaro decided to put some of his attention away from Fast Eddie, and ultimately it bit the Wild Side Junior Heavyweight Champion on the butt as Jarrell Clark was able to retain the NWA World Junior Heavyweight Championship. That was a great, great matchup, and that was just one of many days. And also, fans, of course, the NWA Wildside Heavyweight title, highly anticipated rematch highly. between Onyx and Ray Gordy, but yes, unfortunately, sir. that matchup did not take place. Uh, Ray Gordy arrived at the building tonight. He was, was very, very ill, had a 103 degree temperature, was suffering the flu, still wanted to compete. He was ready, 
Onyx, being the true respectable champion that he is, stated, you know what, you're at 50%, I'm at 100%, this is not fair. He called Gordy out in the ring, and he told him, if you want next week, we'll give you a rematch. So it looks like next week, right here on Wildside, the rematch is going to take place, assuming Gordy is well, uh, but, but that's a huge, huge, huge announcement for next week's edition of Wildside. Unfortunately, it did not take place tonight. Also, Michael Adrian came out afterwards, got involved in a huge skirmish with Onyx, but it was Onyx that sent the one-man mafia with his tail tucked between his legs. That's true, and also one of the matches that had a lot of tongues wagging at NWA Wildside's Hardcore Hill 2004 involved the women. We're talking about Chrissy Vane, Jenny Taylor, and one of our favorites, Daisy Hayes. Unfortunately, Chrissy, Chrissy Vane showed up with the accompaniment of Salvatore Renaro, making his third appearance at Hardcore Hell 2004. I repeat that, his third appearance at Hardcore Hell. I can't work under these circumstances, but regardless, it was a classic match. As a matter of fact, let's go back to Hardcore Hell and re revisit this three-woman matchup. The male contingent of the dressing room at our NWA Wildside, Daisy Hayes, has shown she is no slouch whatsoever. But this is the first opportunity we'll be seeing Daisy Hayes in a matchup featuring members of her own gender. So uh, it's a true test, I guess, on Daisy Hayes' part here at NWA Wildside. And we're still trying to work out the actual gender of Salvatore Renaro, but we'll get that uh, later on. This elimination style three-way ladies dance here. And Chrissy Vane. And you know, this is now the third time we had Salvatore Renaro take part in a Hardcore Hell 2004. I can't work on these circumstances. Yeah, it is pretty stressful. Damn straight. What's also rather stressful is the hold that Jenny Taylor is doing on the wrist of Special K Chrissy Vane. Sure, I hope Jenny doesn't mess up uh, Chrissy's hair. I, I think Vane is a little more worried about that than the actual wrestling match, and that could always present a problem. But we shall see as Vane tries valiantly to get to the rope, but Jenny Taylor still firmly applying this top wrist lock. Taylor making sure the action stays in the middle of the ring. A test of strength. And Vane gamely making it to the ropes. Can't believe it. A ladies matchup not involving referee Speedy Nelson. Jenny Taylor tagging Daisy Hayes. The rather colorful young lady. Don't you have a suit with that pattern on it? Chrissy Vane, reverse waist lock on Daisy Hayes. Hayes trying her damnedest to break it. Waist lock takedown. Roll through into a front chancery by Vane. Daisy with a count. Daisy Hayes with a counter. And Vane for the second time making a dive for those ropes. And Chrissy Vane just tagged the rear end of Jenny Taylor outside the ring. Is that a legal tag? Well, Mike Posey is up. Uh, is somewhat taken by the young lady, so he's going to allow it. I mean, where in the NWA rule books does it say ass tags are allowed? I haven't looked at the rule book for a while. It might be in there, maybe in the appendix. Not that we abide by it here anyway. Arm ringer by Jenny Taylor. Hammerlock, cinching it in, side headlock there by Taylor. Jenny Taylor obviously has some size on uh, Daisy Hayes. The waist lock there. Hayes, Hayes. Hayes trying her damnedest to get out. Hey, very clever. Very inventive offense on the part of young Miss Hayes. He's continually applying the hammerlock, goes to a side headlock there. Really wrenching it in here on Taylor, spins around into a hammerlock yet again. I've said it many times, I'd say Hayes is probably the best pound for pound female grappler in the world. Not a lot of pounds there, but a lot of physical gifts. And Jenny Taylor is seemingly uh, thinking, wanting to slow the action down here, realize that Daisy Hayes is indeed a handful. Yes, and she comes into this matchup with the experience. Daisy 
Casey Hayes has had it up to here with Chrissy Vane. We've had it up here here with the Salvatore Renaro. Hey, Daisy, why don't you slap Sal for us, too, since you're on a roll. Okay! And Sal Renaro gets brought in the hard way. Cooperation from Hayes and Taylor. And Chrissy Vane unceremoniously dumped. Vane for the umpteenth time, able to get to that bottom, bottom rope. As Daisy Hayes and Sal Renaro are threatening to mix it up. I'm sure Sal wouldn't mind that, but not the way uh, that Daisy had planned. Japanese arm drag by Taylor, nice clothesline there. And these ladies can go, I tell you. Hook of the leg. Sal Renaro cheering on his flavor of the month. Springboard from the bottom rope by Taylor. Ruling prawn pinfall there. Barely, barely escaped there. That's true. That got up dangerously close to a three. But obviously, uh, referee Mike Posey thought otherwise. A reversal. And uh, Sal Renaro hanging on to the feet of Jenny Taylor. And hanging on to the feet of her... Of this iron, oh dear, looks like Jenny Taylor's been eliminated. Jenny Taylor has been eliminated. It is now a, a two-man, oh, that's never, not very sexist to me, a two-person roll-up from Daisy Hayes. But only a two-count. A charge of clothesline leveling Chrissy Vane. And a flying body block, but only a two-count. Daisy's showing a little bit of frustration, Dan. Daisy Hayes beat forearm shot here, and she is pounded. She is pounding the hell out of Chrissy Vane. Vane with a drop toe hold. It was a desperation maneuver, but it paid off. Not sure how much collegiate training Chrissy Vane has, but she's showing a little bit of spark in that department and trying to bend Daisy Hayes in half. Perhaps some training from Sal Renaro. Most of the training that Sal Renaro does involving putting newspapers on the floor. Once again, another story from the day. And Sal Renaro and Daisy Hayes, we know what kind of history they've got with one another. But Sal claiming he had a relationship with Hayes at one point. Well, actually just stole a pair of her, her tights out of her bag in the locker room, which is disgusting nonetheless. Well, who would steal any of his house tights? And he was caught sniffing them repeatedly on national television. Terrific. Thanks for bringing that up again. And I hear Sal Renaro's wearing his lucky socks here tonight. Maybe he's hoping to get lucky with Chrissy Vane after the match. Sal Renaro can't spell lucky. But Daisy Hayes having some considerable luck slapping the hell out of Chrissy Vane. Oh, good grief. Nasty clothesline to the breast. And that'll give you a case of the... What kind of call is that? Rather distinctive call. Oh, good heavens! I call him like I see him. And Sal Renaro has seen enough. He is getting involved in this matchup, telling Daisy Hayes to stop. Uh, I think Sal wants some. Maybe the lucky socks are uh, figuring into the uh, picture here. Oh, Daisy. Daisy, please don't do this. And a variation on that move. Yeah, it involves baseball. And Sal Renaro just got his furniture shellacked thanks to Daisy Hayes. And a roll up from Hayes. Oh, Chrissy Vane somehow managing to kick on out. And Sal Renaro is now a tenor. Hayes and Vane duking it out. Hayes getting the better end of the uh, spectrum here. Go for the Daisy Cutter, there's a landslide by Vane, no! Hayes kicked out at the last second, it wasn't a kick out, it was barely a shoulder roll. Whatever possible, obviously Sal Renaro out of the picture, good thing. Wish you could have done that yesterday, so we wouldn't have to put up with so much Renaro here. Oh, Vane, able to stop Daisy Hayes in her tracks. Reversal by Hayes. 
The heart punch. She just nailed her with the heart punch. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Daisy Hayes. Do you mean to say, Dan, that Daisy Hayes was channeling Ox?